everybody. Thanks a lot for joining me here for GEG APAC weekend. The seventh time we've done it. So staying connected 7.0. Uh, my name's Nate. I'm coming at you from Japan. And I'm going to be talking about Google Geo Tools today. Um, but first, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Google Educator Groups and Google Educator Groups uh, Asia Pacific, right? So let me just kind of share my screen here. And I'm going to pull up our website. So if you were to go to Google search and type in GEG APAC, A-P-A-C, uh, you're going to get a link that will take you right here to this wonderful place of collaboration, right? Um, and so for today, you can see that we've got our GEG APAC weekend today and tomorrow where we've got people in multiple languages across the Asia Pacific region uh, presenting on really cool stuff. A lot on Google, but not only Google, because it's all educational technology is about enhancing and enriching learning. It's about the learning, not the tool. And even Google's cool with that. So if you were to go to our events tab, for example, you're going to see we have quarterly online sessions. So three times a year, um, you know, we have a, a special theme and then in different languages have a short session for about 45 minutes to 60 minutes, just sharing really cool stuff with a bunch of people. If you click on the events tab, though, you can scroll down and here you can see the different languages where we have sessions being presented. English, Hindi and English, because if you've ever been to India, English and, uh, and Hindi and other uh, dialects of the country are used in different ways um, and kind of blended, which is very cool. Uh, and Japanese, Filipino, Bahasa, Malaysian and Punjabi. So please have a look. Just uh, I'll, I'll post a link in the in the. Uh, in the comments, and in fact, I'll do that in just one moment. But uh, here's some sessions for the English language, uh, uh, well, links to the English language sessions. I'll post the schedule a little bit later, uh, but you can get that from the link I'm about to post now. And there's a few here in Japanese, not a huge Japanese language representation, but we do have two more sessions tomorrow for those Japanese speakers. Let me quickly post this in the comments here. And... Let's get the session started. And I do encourage you to check out other sessions. Um, so this is about being an explorer, right? Bringing the world to your classroom. Uh, I'm a history, social studies teacher, uh, individuals and societies, to be accurate. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself in a minute. Um, but this is use, uh, a session on Google Geo Tools. Um, we're going to look at, I've got three icons here, Google Earth, My Maps, and Arts and Culture. Uh, we're also going to briefly look at uh, Google Expeditions Pro, which everyone's really happy about uh, coming back. Um, I'm not going to read through this because uh, if you're here in the session, you've probably read through it already in the description. But um, basically, we're going to talk about how you as a teacher can create your own content for your classes, as well as students creating their own content. And I do want to emphasize that um, because we call it Google Geo Tools, it doesn't mean it's only for a geography class or a history class. You can use this in a number of different classes. The different tools we'll look at, you can use in math, you can use in science, you can use in uh, like a language class, whether it's, you know, uh, English for a uh, predominantly English speaking community or for a second language. Um, you use your own creativity and think about how you can use these tools and they are way cool, trust me. Um, so you have to expand your mind and expand your thinking. We have teacher driven, act driven activities that you can use but also having students create content and ideally collaborate with each other is really what we want. Um, so we're gonna look at Google Earth projects. We're gonna look at Google My Maps, Google Arts and Culture, now, Google Story Spheres, it says time permitting here, but Google Story Spheres was cool, but now it seems nobody can access it. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit later. And Google Expeditions is back, called Google Expeditions Pro. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We'll have a little bit of background about what best practices are. Uh, a little bit more about myself. Uh, I teach at Nagoya International School in central Japan, kind of in between Tokyo and Osaka. Um, I teach well, individuals and societies. So grade, uh, well, I used to teach grade eight and nine. Uh, now I teach grade 10 and I teach diploma program history. So I'm kind of a history, social studies guy. Uh, I used to teach political science. Love it. On the side, I do educational technology consulting, which I really love. So I'm a Google certified trainer, innovator, uh, GEG leader, a GEG mentor for Asia Pacific. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I, I do a number of other things with book creator. I'm an Adobe education leader, you know, which I think is really cool too. Both of those things. Uh, I work with National Geographic and, and other stuff. I, I don't work with National Geographic. I'm a certified educator. Anyway, like many of you out there, I do a lot of this kind of stuff. So let's first talk about best practices. And when I say best practices, I'm talking about if we're creating content, we have to think about our audience. We have to think about uh, ethics. We have to think about what is, uh, how. If, if I'm talking about a story, if I'm talking about somebody else's experience, um, what what should I be keeping in mind? Because you know, if I'm talking about, if, if I'm creating a, a, a project or an assignment or a lesson on racism, for example, as a white North American man, uh, my experience is very different um, in terms of, you know, dealing with racism, you know, racist, being racist in the past and things like that. We really have to be empathetic and very careful. Um, so having said that, equity and honesty, very, very important. We should talk about these things with our students, uh, especially when they're creating content. You know, we want them to avoid stereotypes, um, things like, you know, conflict. It's, it's a topic that I often come across in my, uh, in my lessons and my classes. And, you know, conflict happens everywhere around the world. You know, it takes different shapes and forms, um, but we want to be careful not to say that, oh, civil war. Oh, that civil war only happens in these places uh, or that kind of thing. So um, and, and representing like, you know, uh, different parts of the world, you know, degraded environments here when we've never actually been there and don't really know. So we have to be careful, really do our research and talk to our students about doing this. Uh, thinking about our audience, if we as teachers and even students, if they're creating something, um, you know, we have to think about our audience. When, when I make something for students in grade nine, uh, it's a little less text heavy. Uh, the visuals and the videos are more to their age. If I'm making something for people in grade 12, it's a little bit different. Um, definitely uh, more grave, so to speak. Uh, so we want to be careful or conscious of if I'm making something for uh, an elementary school class, it's going to look different. Uh, the images should be, well, more rel relative to elementary students, probably more cartoonish, you know, and that kind of thing, uh, and less text. Uh, and probably um, less advanced language if you're in elementary. Middle school, high school, obviously you figure that out as the teacher, but be aware of it and talk to your students when they go to create their own stuff. Uh, on the right side here, the slide you're looking at, this is about um, preparing, okay? It, when, when you're going to make something within some of these tools that we're going to look at, I always recommend that you get your research done first. Uh, you can choose your links, your images, get your text and everything, even your citations, get them ready first because when you go to build something for your class, and, and even if your students are working collaboratively and building something together in your class, get the research and uh, all the links and to videos and images, get all that stuff done first because then it's easier and faster to actually build what you want to build with these tools that we're going to look at. Um, I say be consistent. I think that's really important even when classes are working collaboratively. Let's say you're making a, a Google mind map together or a Google Earth project together. Um, it, it looks a lot better when everybody's on the same page. It looks more professional. And it also teaches students the, the thinking of design and representation uh, and, and being consistent across a group. So, you know, I recommend being consistent as a teacher. I try to be cons as consistent as possible in the things that I make. And that's, you know, for me, that goes with when I'm teaching my students and making things with them as well. So that was a little bit long. Uh, I want to start with YouTube, though. I didn't mention YouTube earlier, but uh, what's this uh, with YouTube, you say, right? All right. Well, Here's an example of a playlist using a 360 degree camera. Uh, this is something on the side that I do with my student. Um, I do myself, but you know, I, I kind of put it out there to the world. Hey, here's the history of Japan. Um, a playlist that I've made with my own camera where I've done my own research and I've you know got my citations and this and that. Now, a playlist of videos you can use 
uh, about places around the world or whatever it is you're using in your class, yeah, that's pretty easy to make, not the purpose of this presentation. Um, but I do wanna show you, if you have a 360 degree camera or have access to one, um, you know, why not, for example, take uh, photos of places around your community that have cultural significance or historical and cultural significance. And you can use those in your class. I, I really feel the 360 imagery is very powerful and it kind of does bring us into uh, the place. Whoops, sorry, here, that's what I want to tap on that. So here's an example of some of the videos and I am not going to play through a whole video. I'm just going to kind of show you. volume down on that. Sorry, YouTube, I'm skipping the ad because I'm doing a presentation here. All right, so this is made with a 360 degree camera. And it's got, you know, the audio capability. Oh, who's that weird guy in there, right? Um, Mitsumine Shrine in Chichibu, Japan, a very cool place. Um, you, you could, if you get a 360 camera, you can take photos and videos where you're speaking and using audio. What a great way to teach your students, right? Um, Use your imagination. Maybe your, your kids are in grade one and they're learning about location. This is a hospital. This is a, a police station. This is a fire department, a grocery store. Um, you know, you could use a 360 camera to actually teach that. And if the kids live in your community, which I think applies to most of us, that'd be kind of engaging for them. Like, oh, I've been there. I know that place. My mom and dad go there. My parents go there, that kind of thing. Um, and if you could take your own videos, even more powerful. Now I'm going to stay in YouTube because there is a YouTube thing that I think is really cool. And it, it kind of has to do with geo, kind of doesn't, but it's something I think everybody should know about. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type ancient Greece. I usually do ancient Rome. Uh, well, you know what? I think I'll do this. Let's just go with uh, Japan. Uh, I'm going to type culture. I live in Japan, by the way, right? So, okay, now here's the thing. I type Japan culture. It's a really, really big topic. But if you notice here in YouTube, you've got your filters, right? So let's tap on that. And I'm going to choose under four minutes because I want videos that aren't too long. I'm going to go back to my filters right there. I'm going to choose 360 degrees. So now I'm finding 360 degrees. Oh, hey, look at that. I got a video in there. Kind of cool. Um, so let's go with Tranquil Chiba. Okay, I'll tap on this. And so now I found a 360 degree video. And let me just pop through. Okay, so it's 360. Looks like it's just an image and a collage of images that are in 360, but it's pretty cool. Um, let me just go with... Um, Ancient, I'm going to go with Greece again. I usually use ancient Rome, but I'm going to do the same thing. Filter, under four minutes, filter. You can look at the other filters and kind of, you know, figure out which ones work for you. Um, oh, Greek toilets. Okay, let's do this. Well, let's see if we get an ad here. All right, so now what's cool about this is that, you know, it's obviously a drawing, right? Some kind of recreation, but it's still in 360. And it's taking us to a different place in the world. And it's also taking us to a different time in world history. So YouTube's got some pretty cool stuff. And this is kind of, you know, obviously VR. So I think it's kind of neat. I mean, look at that, right? All right, let's come back to this. So YouTube and VR, that's, that's your lesson right there. Uh, Google Earth Projects. Now, by the way, if um, if you got some ideas, like I've, I've got my phone going here, please, you know, if you're not a lot of people watching right now, but uh, if you post, uh, you know, like a comment or a question, uh, you know, I can I can respond to it in real time. That would be great. Uh, so Google Earth projects before I go through all of this stuff, I want to show you what it does. Let's go with discoveries that changed history. Now, depending on your Wi-Fi connection, it might take a long time for Google Earth to load. Uh, I got a pretty good Wi-Fi connection, so that was pretty quick. So essentially, what you can do is create a tour of the world. You can take people to different places, but, and you can make this on your own. 
of course, you can, you know, use things that other people have made and use them in your class. And that's kind of cool. Uh, but you and your students can actually collaborate and make your own tour of different parts of the world uh, using Google Earth and a feature called Google Earth Projects, which I absolutely love. I was on the beta testing team for two years before it was launched. A lot of fun. Um, so as an example, I've got a full screen slide right here. And by the way, if you're wondering, how do I make this? In the slide deck that I will share later, you'll you, there's a link to a video that teaches you how to do it. So, for example, discoveries that changed history, Tutankhamun right here is pretty cool. Now, students, for example, this kind of Google Earth project, right? Now, these are different points in history, different discoveries. There is no timeline, right? So, I could use this for students working in groups. Okay, the four of you are going to uh, choose one of the different ones, and the four of you are going to choose four of the other different ones, and you're going to teach each other, like a jigsaw activity, right? Um, so for example, I could click on any one of these and go straight to it. Uh, if I was going to go to Troy, and Troy did exist, and the Trojan War did exist. Maybe not in the myth that we know, but it did exist. In fact, there were seven Troys that existed on Earth. All right, so here on the side, you can see I've got all my information. This is clearly for a high school audience, right? You can see I've got images at the top right here. And I've got a video embedded, which is kind of cool. Tap on that. And people can watch like a video. They can embellish and enhance learning by putting images and video in with each specific place you go to uh, on your travels, on your journey, so to speak. Um, so that's one way to do it. Or as you can see here, uh, you can just go through chronologically, tap on one. Oh, we're leaving Turkey and we're going to Peru. And that's kind of cool. I, I never get tired of that spinning earth, you know, kind of thing. And do you see how what I've done here is actually brought people down to the street view. So when students use this, they can actually click on the arrows or they can click and drag and toggle to uh, kind of explore on their own. And of course, they have the text that I want them to read, which is kind of cool. And again, if you've just joined, I've noticed a few people are just joining now. Uh, Type in the comments, you know, where you're from and uh, do you have some ideas uh, or is there something you want to know? And I'll reply to you on my phone here. That'd be totally cool. All right. So let me kind of go back. All right. So if I was to present this, right, I think I've, I've kind of shown you how it works. I just I really like the idea that you can go anywhere in the world and you can force people down into the street view. It's really cool looking at the bird's eye view. All right, so like this one right now, Olduvai Gorge. Now here, I haven't given students the opportunity to actually go to the street view. What opportunity they have is to click this little, you know, human icon, it's called Pigman actually. And it looks like we don't have anywhere, but here, if you see blue, that means there's a street view and you can check it out. Okay, so I dragged and dropped on the blue. And I can get a sense of the place that we're at. Uh, if it, you know, if it's an archaeological site or something like that, maybe you can see where the dig is happening or whatever. Here you can see archaeologists or, or maybe geologists doing some kind of survey. That's ah, kind of cool. All right, so, so essentially that's Google Earth Projects. I've got some examples here that, uh, you know, you can use with your students or you can kind of check out and see how it works. But here's the idea. Text, audio, video, images. In fact, let me go back to this. I, at the end, have put a full screen slide. And note here, I've got try this quiz. So if students click on that, then they go to a Google form and they complete a quiz, right? I mean, th this is kind of a joke quiz, just to let you know. But the point is, you can uh, link Kahoot quizzes or a Google form or something to one of these full screen slides, uh, you know, to make it a little bit more interactive. Uh, yes, you can embed 
things like Padlet or Answer Garden, whatever. Uh, but it is a little bit clunky still, so I, I don't recommend that. So that's Google Earth Projects. I, I think it's one of the coolest things in the last like five years or 10 years that's come out. So I really like it a lot. Uh, now, if you want to know how to create one of those, this is a tutorial video. Um, it's a few years old now, but uh, actually nothing has changed. So have a look. Google Earth Projects, way cool. And uh, if I'm pronouncing your name right, uh, Eben, thanks for joining us. Uh, you're in Borneo, Malaysia. I, I've been to Kota Kinabalu, absolutely beautiful place. Uh, I've only been once, but I'd like to go back. Uh, and hopefully I will at some point. But thanks a lot for joining. All right, next up, we're going to go with Google My Maps. And uh, yeah, Ebon or Ebon, uh, not sure how you pronounce your name. I apologize. But if you got some ideas, post them in the, uh, in the chat. If you got some links of things you've made or that kind of thing. Uh, okay, so next up here is Google My Maps. Let me begin with some examples. And, and again, there's a tutorial to teach you how to make your own Google My Map if you're not sure. Uh, let's see. That I'm going to put another video in there because there's some cool things you can do with Google My Maps that uh, for the sake of today's uh, session, I can't get into, but uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. Let, let me start with, uh, I want to start with uh, Panikin and Pinta. I didn't make this, but I think this is a great example of how you can use uh, a short story or uh, a novel uh, that students read that they turn into a map by telling the story. So I got this from a friend, uh, Chris Betcher, um, guy at Google, actually. But uh, so essentially what this teacher has done is marked places in the map that happened in the storybook. Now, if you click on a pin, you're not going to get a lot of information. This is just used as kind of an example, right? But think about that. If you've got a book like Around the World in 80 Days, you could create a Google map of the different places that you know the uh, the antagonist and protagonists have gone to, and uh, and and put it into a map or even a Google Earth project, right? Um, it's just a really cool tool to tell a story, I think. And let me show you an example. Uh, here's social justice in the news. I did this with my students um, uh, a few years ago when there were a lot of. Um, uh, anti-racist and Black Lives Matter protests happening in the United States. And we kind of thought, you know what, this is happening around the world, actually, and people are demanding social justice. So what, what I did was get students to do some basic research on the news and where were uh, Black Lives Matter protests happening around the world. And, and as you can see, they were happening around the world. And what students did was fill in a Google form and I took that Google form and uploaded it to my maps. Uh, now, this session is not about how to do that. Sorry. Uh, this is just a short 30 to 45 minute session here. But as with anything here, you've got students with a brief synopsis and a link to their photos. And the whole point is that we can see by looking at the map, if we were to zoom out, we realize that, oh, this is something that's happening around the world. Uh, let's see. Another thing that you can do with Google My Maps, I do not have a tutorial for this, unfortunately, is create these different, um, you know, polygons, they're called, right? Where you can actually take a map and draw different parts of, diff you know, different regions in the world. And this is a student that I had that created... Uh, plate tectonics. They, they were working in a group. Uh, this student in particular uh, obviously didn't finish, but I think they did a really good job on the design. So ideally what's going to happen is on the left side here, you're going to have, uh, you know, a little bit of text that explains what, you know, what is the Pacific plate? Uh, how is it important and relevant? But this is a great example of how polygons can actually be used uh, very, uh, how do I, exactly, you know, tap, 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 tap. Again, this is not a session to teach you how to do it. It's a session on showing you what you can do. And I think there's one more in here. Do, do, do. Conflict stories. Yeah, let's do this. 
This is another example of where I had my students do research and then they had to fill out a Google form that I could upload to create uh, a class map. All right, so we look at Venezuela. Here's a synopsis of what was happening. And uh, we didn't get to the point where we could upload videos, but uh, uh, just because time ran out in the class, to be honest. But you could do that as well. In Google My Maps, you can put in videos and photos and that kind of thing. So it's a great platform for collaboration. And again, uh, I don't have it in my slide deck right here, but I will put in a tutorial about uh, how you can uh, take information from a Google form and then upload it to Google My Maps to instantly make a map. Um, give me five minutes after this presentation and I'll put that in there. And it's very cool. So the basic how-to for making a Google My Map is right there. So have a look at that, please. Oh, that shouldn't say Google My Maps. It should say Arts and Culture. Now, Google Arts and Culture is a tool that I feel is kind of neglected, um, not within Google, but among teachers. Maybe a little bit with Google. Come on, Google, get more content on there. Um, but the whole point of Google Arts and Culture is to bring art from around the world and cultural ideas and, and heritage from around the world into one place. So Google Arts and Culture works with different partners like National Geographic, excuse me, National Geographic, the Smithsonian, companies that create, create 360 degree imagery and video and things like that. So uh, Google Arts and Culture is pretty rich in terms of what they have on offer. So let's jump in and I'll show you what you can do with this. And we're gonna start with augmented reality because I think augmented reality is just kind of cool. Let me close these other tabs here just to make sure we're moving quickly. All right, so this is a link that I have to, uh, you know, one thing. Now we've got the Artemis mission happening uh, in uh, uh, with NASA. It, there are four Artemis programs that are happening and the fourth one apparently is gonna take us and keep us on the moon, us meaning the human race, not just America. So what I can do is zoom in by using my trackpad this is Neil Armstrong's astronaut suit, or at least an augmented reality version of it. If I share this with my students, I mean, look at that. That's ridiculously cool, right? I mean, I can, I'm not going to zoom in on his butt. Let's, uh, let's zoom in on maybe on the helmet a bit more. Or maybe the midriff. All right, there we go. I mean, that's really cool. Kids get really excited about that. I like to think. And we only have to click the share button and then you've got classroom and Twitter and that kind of thing, or you can mail it to your students, right? Um, I do want to, let me just type in and oh, let, let me just point this out too. Right up in the top right here, you've got this search feature. You've got, you can type augmented, augmented reality. And you'll notice at the top, so my point is you can search for different things, but notice at the top here, now I've got AR. So I can look at from here, all the different AR things that are available on Google Arts and Culture. Animals, history, art, let's see, architecture is another one. Uh, I'm gonna go with history because I'm kind of a history guy. Um, note, by the way, I can go right from the top or right to the bottom. In fact, oh, yeah, let's go with history. I do think it's kind of cool when you can look at these different bugs that, you know, have been discovered by archaeologists that, you know, they're, they've re, they've recreated what they would look like. I mean, that is so cool. Of course, it's not super realistic. It looks kind of like a plastic model, but it depends on what you're looking at, right? Um, ancient artifacts, the Berlin gold hat. I can zoom in. I can look at the designs, you know, my students can make inferences, they can really think about, oh, if I was going to make something like this, uh, how would I make it? What design would I be? Uh, you know, elementary kids doing art, imagine showing some of these to your students and saying, hey, what would you make? Let me come back down here. This is one that I look at from time to time because I just think it's really neat. And again, you can zoom in. 
I mean, wow, that is awesome. Now, here you can see this little heart mark, right? If I click on that, that means it saves it to my favorites. It saves it to, uh, you know, the place in Google Arts and Culture that I want it to be shared in. You can't make folders and things like that. I'll show you how it looks in a moment, but it still is pretty cool. And if you click here, view an augmented reality, that's if you've got, you know, like the headset and all that kind of stuff. Well, um, we can't go there right now. Uh, let's go back here to the deck. Now, whoops, sorry. We also have 360 degree video in arts and culture. So here's another one. Sorry with the toilet theme. I know we saw ancient Greek toilets, and now we're looking at uh, uh, how do you go to the how do you go to the toilet in space? What I want to highlight with this is number one that it's in Google Arts and Culture, but number two, here you've got two different people talking. You've got text, and you can scroll in 360. And to me, this is like you know taking uh, 360 video to the next level. These are pros that make this stuff. And note that I've got the closed captioning on there. But there are a number of 360 degree videos that you can access as well in Google Arts and Culture. In fact, there's one that I just think is really cool that I want to show you because I'm a nerd. Uh, I'm going to go 360. Let's see, 360 dinosaur. Is it going to come up? Is it going to come up? No. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm going to have to link it the next time I do this, but uh, that's your challenge. If you have students that like dinosaurs, get them to look for this uh, dinosaur that floats off the wall and swims throughout the museum. It's very cool stuff. And for the sake of time, we'll go to the next one. So, advocacy is another great thing about Google Arts and Culture. Um, and you see right there, the statue's at risk from rising sea levels. So this is obviously a climate change uh, initiative, right? We have to combat climate change. And so all the different things like the stories and the themes and things like that um, focused on Rapa Nui and Easter Island are right here. I mean, that's a whole unit as far as I'm concerned, uh, depending on what you're teaching. You know, it could be an interdisciplinary unit, right? You got the history, you got the science. You have the language in there. Uh, lots going on. Now, let me come back here. Um, okay, so there's stories. So I click on this. Let me close these other tabs up here. Now, here's an example of a story within Google Arts and Culture. So there's a lot of history-based stuff where, you know, you can scroll through depending on the story. And, and you get these little snapshots. And notice here, too, though. If I tap on the street view, I can kind of look into this museum, which is totally cool. I can click and drag and scroll around. I want to see more about that. What's that? Okay, that's not what I wanted. Anyway, but you've got minimal text, but it, you know, it's it's great to capture interest. Maybe at the beginning of a unit or beginning of a lesson to, you know, hook your students kind of thing. All right, and favorites. Now within Google Arts and Culture, uh, and you, you've probably noticed by now, like the tabs at the top, you've got Home Explorer, Play, Nearby, Favorites. Favorites is the place where you uh, you click that heart mark and you save the things that you might want to use a little bit later, right? Um, so you've got items. Items are usually, you know, like a uh, they could be photos, they could be uh, 360 videos, A, augmented reality stuff, AR. It could be stories, themes. Now, you cannot change these, just to let you know. You can't change the different, you know, I guess, topic titles. And if you notice here, I've got galleries. Galleries are explicitly for um, different themes within images. So images that are in Google Arts and Culture you can save to a gallery. And if I click here and I click edit, so I've got my Apollo gallery here. I can change my title. Um, I haven't made this public, but you can make it publicly viewable. So for example, if you have students doing a project and there's lots of great images on Google Arts and Culture that you want them to access, then, or, or maybe just look at these Renaissance paintings. What did they teach you about the Renaissance period? 
then you know you could put them in there and share the link. I'm not making this public, so I'm going to click Save here. But just to let you know that the galleries are really just about images. All right. So click favorites, click galleries again. And, and that's another tutorial, right? That's, uh, you know, play around with this on your own. The purpose of today is just to show you some really cool stuff that is out there. And again, if you just joined us, uh, put your name, let us know where you're from in the world. Um, and uh, I got my phone here. I can respond to any questions and that kind of thing. Uh, all right. So the nearby tab, I, I'll show you just really quickly. Uh, basically, these are museums in your local area. So these are the museums that are in my area of Nagoya, Japan, where I live. If I zoom out. So look at this. Like there's like nine museums in that one area. There's 13 museums in that area. Um, any museum that's kind of registered, not kind of, that is registered with Google Arts and Culture or on Google Maps, then it's going to be right there. So, you know, I think it's a great feature. It's like, hey, check out this local museum. Uh, in your area explore now this tab is where okay you can see 360 videos street view or you can scroll down you can look at the different themes and topics and that kind of thing i, I recommend using the search feature so for example uh, i'm a history teacher so if i type french revolution now I've got French Revolution related uh, material here. Of course, I'm looking at the Palace of Versailles. Let me just go back here, though. Uh, and again, I want to go to Street View because uh, here's a cool example of some of the other uh, places in the world, like stadiums and that kind of thing. Uh, let's look at the Taj Mahal. Place I've always wanted to go. I've been to India, but not the Taj Mahal. Okay, so I've zoomed in there, but you notice on the side here, I've got different levels, right? So isn't that cool? Like I can check out parts of the Taj Mahal based on the floor that they're at. I mean, that is ridiculously cool. Tap on arts and culture, come on back. This is a landing page, by the way, for arts and culture. I recommend that you use the tabs at the top. Very quickly, the play tab. There's all these different games that you can do. I, I recommend you play around a little bit. Um, I, I have played around a lot with these. I just don't find them useful as a secondary teacher. If you're an elementary teacher, definitely check them out. Uh, there is one for secondary teachers that are kind of fun. Uh, it's all about, you know, guessing different parts of the world, um, you know, history kind of stuff. I leave it to you to uh, kind of check out because we've got to move on. I got one more thing that I really want to show you. And it's Expeditions Pro. But just to make sure, ah, actually, before that, Google Story Spheres. Google Story Spheres was a 360 degree image platform where you had one 360 degree image, but students could scroll around and listen to audio talking about specific places. Uh, this obviously wasn't embraced by the teacher community because I think it's been deprecated, but I've got no news. And what I mean by that is if I tap on it, it's gone. It's completely gone. And I'm trying to find out why. If any of you out there know why, please let me know because I have no idea because it was really cool. All right, the last Google Geo tool we're going to go through is Expeditions Pro. Now, up until two years ago, 2021, we had Google Expeditions where um, basically, excuse me, with a VR headset, you could take students on a tour and as they're using the headsets, you use your iPad or your, your smartphone and you can highlight and circle things, direct their attention with arrows as they're looking at the world in 360 degrees. There was Expeditions and VR Tour Creator. Uh, they went away, Tour Creator and Expeditions, and people were pretty upset about it. Uh, why did they go? Why did it go away? Uh, maybe because not enough people were using it. I'm not sure. But now it's back, but it's called Google Expeditions Pro. I guess to differentiate. Uh, I'll, I'll share this slide deck in the in the comments, but if you tap on that image, 
it will take you to Expeditions Pro. It works just like VR Tour Creator, uh, but there are a couple of things that are a little bit weird uh, that I'll explain. Um, so if you scroll down here, this is where you can create your own virtual tours. And so I've got my personal account open up here. Uh, so I'm going to kind of show you how it looks. Now, first thing, you can create, uh, not create, but uh, you can create your own tours. Uh, but you can look at tours that have been made. Now, I'm a history teacher, so I'm going to naturally go to history right there. My apologies. Okay, so I had to click on the browse to have my apologies. <coughs> Excuse me. And so now I can scroll through and see what tours have been made by, uh, by you know, Google and Google's partners and that kind of thing. In the past, Google Expeditions, people like you and me, we could make tours and then share them with the world. Um, at the moment, you can't do that with Expeditions. Uh, let's see. Let's go with... Um, uh, Martin Luther. All right. Yeah, it actually taught that. So you can see here that we've got different places. You can see these are places, you know, contemporary places, because in the 1450s, I'm sure people didn't have cars. But this is kind of cool where you can show people like the different, uh, you know, different places that uh, existed, how they look today. Let me actually go back to browse and let's go back to history because I want to show you examples of recreations that have been made. The, all right. So the Roman calls. Oh, let's go to the Viking village. This is kind of cool. OK, you can see here we've got three different places. It's taken a little while to load. Um, I've got a pretty good Wi-Fi connection, so I'm not sure why this is happening. Let me tap here. Okay, all right. Okay, we're not going to do that. We're going to go back to maybe ancient Rome. Might load a little bit faster. Okay, so this is the Colosseum. All right, so we can scroll through, and you can see that this is a recreation. But as you can tell by the you know the clothes that people are making or wearing, and this obviously is a partner company. If we were to tap on that. It doesn't do anything. Inside the Colosseum, this is, again, this is kind of cool, right? It kind of gives students an idea of like, oh, the Con Colosseum had a, a canopy, really? Or they had that many people in there? Uh, so again, Google Expeditions Pro, it's got stuff that you can use um, in terms of creating. Let me go back. Actually, if you go back to home, it's going to take you to the landing page. So I'm going to go back here because I'm logged in. I'll go to My Tours. And let me show you. Now, this is a tour that I've created. Whoops. So I'm going to tap on it. Now, here you can see this is the link that I want to share with my students. I would right click and copy the link address, that kind of thing. If I was going to use this with a VR headset, that's the link that I've got to share with my students and, you know, get them to join, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, for the tour you know, in my class. It does work, by the way. I've used this in my classes. It does work. Um, but what I want to show you is, okay, here's the deal. Very quickly, this is not a tutorial about how to make Expeditions Pro, but I do want to show you something that really frustrated me uh, when I was starting, uh, you know, learning to use this. Now, just like the old Expeditions, you got your title, your location, your description, you're limited to word count, all that's fine, credits. Now, here you've got audio you can upload. It's great. Scene narration, that's great. Uh, and again, like anything, you can add photos. They pop up. Great. Tap out. <laughs> I'll talk. I, I've got a little tiny bald spot in my head. That's why I use that one. <laughs> Put it right there. All right. So the photos are just pop-ups with no description, really. Um I mean, they, they are. You have description for the photos, but uh, you can put audio in, but you've got to upload it in MP3 format, I believe. Let me tap on that, actually. Uh, yes, in MP3 format. Uh, but here's the deal. People tend to think that we have to click save 
in Expeditions Pro, it's click update. So keep that in mind. Um, you're, you're not clicking save, you're clicking update in Expeditions Pro. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to leave it at that because we have just one more thing to go through. Uh, SDGs, if you click on this link, and I will share the slide deck in a moment when we finish here, we're just about to go over time here. Um, this is just a slide deck I've created with some ideas for teaching sustainable development goals. Um, you know, hey, we're talking about Google Geo tools, so it really does fit and it's quite important. So feel free to uh, click on that, have a look. And uh, again, keep in touch uh, at Nathan Gildard on Twitter. Uh, edtechtrainer.com is where you can find other resources. And I'm at socialstudiesamurai.com as well. Haven't spent much time with that website, but uh, that's okay. And you can grab me on YouTube as well. Uh, so this has been Be an Explorer. Bring the world to your classroom. I uh, hope you found some kind of uh, use in the, the tools that I presented to you. Got some new ideas. Uh, again, there's tutorial videos for a few of these things, uh, but there's other places you can learn how to use them. The best place to learn is yourself trying, failing, try, fail, try, fail, and that kind of thing. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to thanks uh, say thank you for joining. Uh, and, and we've got other sessions going on in multiple languages through uh, the Asia Pacific region for a GEG APAC weekend, the seventh one. We won't be doing this again until January 2024. So take advantage of it now. And if you can't, come back and have a look at the videos. So thanks a lot for joining me. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend. <laughs>